Hello guys, this is the Polyglot Programmer and today we're going to talk about the pricing model for console ports for the Go engine. And more specifically, we're going to talk about the pricing model for W4 Games. W4 Games is a company that was created by, by veteran Go developers that decided to create this company to enrich the Go develop community overall by providing a service that is not allowed to live in the Goda repository for the open source nature. Open source is basically contrary to proprietary knowledge, right? And a lot of the, the knowledge related to porting games to consoles is proprietary, so that's why it cannot live in the Goda repository. So W4 Games basically solves this issue by, by, by allowing users to to use their export templates for specifically Nintendo Switch, Xbox Series, and PlayStation 5, at least at this point. I heard that they're working on PS4 and some other uh, templates, but <clears throat> as of now, I'm sorry, as of now, this is what they have. And they recently released this article over here, which I'll, I'll leave the link in the description, which they go over every single detail, but I already went over all this and I basically create a summary of the most important information, at least from my point of view, and the most important questions. So this is, so, so let's, let's go over those, right? So this is the, this is what I came up with, right? So you have three different plans. We have Startup Pro and Enterprise, right? And the most important variables for you in this case is the team size, right? Uh, the number of platforms that you want to export for, in this case, one, two, or three, because these are the ones that they support right now, right? And are you a publisher or not? If you're a publisher, you're automatically excluded from the starter package. You cannot be here. You, you need to go into the pro or enterprise. Right? Enterprise is for really big companies, companies that have a team bigger than 20 people, and they need custom service, custom pricing, custom relationships with them, right? And, um, Hmm. So most of indie devs and solo devs, they're 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 gonna live on this tier right here, which is the started, just which is the started tier, right? And so the three most important questions that I came up with is uh, what constitutes a team, right? And they actually have this question right here somewhere, right? Well, but basically they say that what constitutes a team? Oh, it's right here. What constitutes a team is, is people that actively work on the project. Uh, for more than four months and and that can be anybody from the junior dev to the CEO right so you need to take into account basically everybody that worked on the project for more than four months so for example if you have a freelancer that worked for a couple of weeks that's okay you don't need to add that person to the team the other important question is how how does the team size is audited right and for that they <clears throat> sorry again so for that, they basically say that they you provide a number of the uh, the number of the team that goes into the contract, and they basically trust your company to provide updates on the number of the team during the during the the process of development of the game. And of course, uh, like they say right here, right? We also trust properly recognize the team staff in the game credits, right? So for example, if you say during the entire time they have eight people in the team, but then in the team credit you have 50 people, then that's weird. So they're probably gonna come after you because of that. And you probably want to charge you more money. Um, the another important question that I came that I that I had and that they actually answer is what happens if my subscription ends, right? So basically the subscriptions uh, are yearly, right? So what happens if it ends basically at the from the moment that it ends, you cannot publish anymore. So as I understood, if you already have something published, right, as the answer right here, uh, you can leave it there. But you cannot, you cannot have any updates in, uh, to your already published game using their code, and you cannot publish any new games, right? Um, so that's my take on it. So basically, you have an yearly subscription, that if your subscription ends and your game is already published, your game can stay there, it's okay. But if you want to publish updates or if you want to publish a new game, you need to pay for another year. That's it. And for the pricing, it's actually a lot, it's actually not that bad, at least from uh, 
uh, at least that's my take on it, right? So basically, if you're if you're uh, a small indie dev up to eight developers and you want to port to one platform, you're going to pay $800, $800 a year. If you want to port to two platforms, you're going to pay $1,500 a year and three platforms, $2,000 a year. So basically cheaper as you add one platform. And if you're a pro, it's a bit more expensive, but if you have a team of 20 people, probably $4,000 a year is not that much money. Uh, same goes for two platforms and three platforms. And for enterprise, it's custom pricing. That's it for the pricing model for console ports. Uh, this is surprisingly accessible, in my opinion. Even if you're indie dev, if you're solo dev or a small dev, paying $100 a year to port to PlayStation or Nintendo Switch or whatever, that's going to give you a lot more reach. It's very accessible. $800 a year is not, it's not cheap, but it's not, at the same time, it's not very expensive. I think it's an investment that is definitely worth uh, doing. Um, that's it for today. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, if you have any comments, please leave them down below and I'll see you next time.